so I thought for my video today I might have a chat with you about Ubuntu Mate. I've been using it a fair bit over the past few weeks and have really come to appreciate it as a distribution. So I thought I might make a video um, where I just talk about some of the things that I really like about it. Now this is going to be a bit of a rambly kind of vlog and I know I usually pull out the video camera for these kind of videos but considering there are some specifics about Ubuntu Mate I'd like to demonstrate obviously it seems more logical to throw it up in a virtual machine and do it that way. So that's what I did but I may meander and digress and all that kind of stuff so if you want something succinct and to the point um, what are you doing on this channel? <laughs> um, so uh, Ubuntu Mate is a distribution that I've really come to like because it ticks a lot of the boxes like they, they you know there's a lot of attention to detail gone into it uh, I find that it actually works on probably the largest number of uh, the you know the largest variety of hardware that I've ever tried it on um, it is very user friendly even though this this desktop paradigm that I've got up here right in front of me is is very different to 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 Mac and Windows um, and this is this is actually very similar to, to my first Linux desktop since I started using Linux, you know, as, as my my primary operating system back in 2006, now with with Fedora Core five or six or something in that, you know, so, something like that, and that had a very similar GNOME to layout, and I, I knew exactly where everything was right from the beginning. You know, you click on the Applications button if you want to open an application. Accessories, graphics, internet is categorized easily. There's not too much in there to overwhelm you. You know, you want to see your internet applications, applications, internet there. Yeah. You want to go to places, your home folder, your desktop. You want to look at the folders on your computer. You want to connect to a server. You want to search for something. You want to, you know, you want to go to the control center. You want to shut down the machine and the systems. You know, you want to look at some administrative tools. You want to set up a printer. All of this stuff done through a couple of easy menus. I think that, you know, that's brilliant. You can also customize it and make it look a lot more Windowsy if you want. But this is perfectly good. You've got an off button there, which uh, admittedly is uh, is is also next to the um the the closer close window button there so i have i you know i i have come across situations where not necessarily me myself i've got quite i've got a trackable mouse and and, and quite enjoy the the precision that you get with it but a lot of people who might be on like uh, lap uh, laptop trackpads and whatnot um i had you know ha there have been cases where you know buttons like that that are too close together can sometimes cause issues but of course you can just uh, remove from panel and and you know it's as easy as that. It's customizable as well. Absolutely customizable, right down to to every single button. Uh, you you know, so in, in some ways, it, you might even call it too customizable. Um, also, one of the reasons why I quite like Mate, and this isn't necessarily part of the Ubuntu Mate thing, is I, th I have an appreciation for desktop environments that are designed to fit on multiple distributions. So that way. If, for example, Ubuntu does something that I don't necessarily appreciate and would like to switch distributions or would like to switch people I know or other people's um, from this distribution to another, there's a good chance that that other distribution will run Mate and the user interface will be the same, even though a lot of the underlying tech would have would have been switched out for another distribution. So there is that degree of continuity there as well. There, you know, it is lightweight as well, or it's snappy, which is good, which is quite good. So it, fe you know, the, the, you know, it just it just feels like a responsive uh, desktop environment completely. So one of the things that a lot of newbie-friendly distributions often um, fail to appreciate is the importance of a first impression and the importance of of the website. So I've got the Ubuntu Mate website up here, um, and I really like this. So it 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 isn't a pretty website, you know. It is. It, I got to admit, I'm not the biggest fan of that that shade of green that they chose uh it does look a little a little too earthy i think for a distribution but uh, that you know that's the, the minus my you know the most minor of issues very superficial easy to change uh, in fact even in the uh preferences look and feel appearance you can go to say the ambient mate um, and then you can change the colors of some of the selected items you can change the color schemes so if I didn't want that, you know, I could change it into uh, into a different color. So you know, you've got you know, it's it's you've got customization options. Now it does seem that the first message here, Ubuntu plus Mate plus Love equals Ubuntu Mate, is perhaps one that might go over the heads of people that are new to Linux. And it does seem that it the the market that it wants to hook quickly, well, it, it is a pretty broad market at that actually. You know, it it it, it, it is use new use it is new users, uh, but it is also people who are looking to use Linux specifically and are already aware of the benefit that Linux offers. And it's not 
trying to to sell you on Linux. It's just trying to say, okay, if you want a good Linux-based operating system, if you already appreciate Ubuntu, you already appreciate, you know, the Mate desktop. This is what we've got for you. Um, there is plenty of short sentences that are very, you know, descriptive. So it gives you screenshots here. It tells you, and, and a good example of this is the about page. So what does all this mean? What is Ubuntu Mate? It gives, you know, there's videos there, that's good. And it gives you a good list of objectives as well. It tells you exactly, you know, what it plans to do, what it aims to be. So, you know, accessible to all. It, you know, it, it does. It aims to be, you know, a, a fully inclusive operating system, which is good, you know. Um, increase adaptation. It's a, there's an interesting one here, right at the bottom, which says software selection will favor functionality and stability over lightness and whimsy. Stability, especially when you're when you expect you know new users to Linux um, to pick up your distribution, stability is super important. Super important, especially more important than how light a distribution is, because most you know anyone coming from Windows is is, is, is the system is already lighter. You know you, you don't you don't need to push that um, at the expense of, of of something else. So stability super important, super important. Um, Whimsy, I'm going to assume, is just bells and whistles. That it's not just going to attach some bells and you know, it's not going to attach some some fancy gimmick just simply to um, just simply because it looks nice or, or or simply because it's trendy. You know, it's it's pragmatic and uh, logical. Uh, also, they're great open source citizens. I've you know I've heard this from so many different sources, but you know they contribute all this stuff back. Um, you know this welcome screen and the the Ubuntu uh, the Ubuntu Mate software boutique, which I'll get onto in a minute. You know all of this stuff, open source, all all of it's you know put put upstream, and and that's exactly you know that that is completely embracing the 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 benefits of of open source software. Uh, recreate the halcyon days of Ubuntu for users who prefer a traditional desktop metaphor as well. This is quite good. This is for people, you know. So it it, it does have that niche of people that that like Windows Seven, and um, you know, you, you and, and you can you can set Mate up or Mate rather to to look a lot like Windows Seven or something more. You know, I, I suppose when it says traditional, it means traditional in in regards to Linux and GNOME too, but. You know, customizability easy. The FAQ section is really good as well. So if you've got any questions, um, they actually explain their their logic behind software choices. Now, uh, many of you guys will, will shout at me in the comments section for being too um, focused on uh, software choices. But when it comes to newbie-friendly distributions, the default selection, it is really important. Like, most people will just use what's, what's put in front of them. So, you know, that is why what's put in front of them is considerably important. Not everyone is going to know they've got a choice for a piece of software. There are going to be a lot of people that think this is the software that I'm landed with. So you want to make sure that's good. So the reason they've chosen these different, you know, they've chosen Pigeon Instant Message or Firefox or HexChat, uh, the LibreOffice and all this kind of stuff, is because it, it is also software that is um, supported and used by the um, by uh, official Ubuntu flavors. And and what that means is that there is more maintenance and and um, you know manpower going into the development of the standard Ubuntu applications, and then Ubuntu Mate can then just sort of piggyback on all that good work, um, and, and and you know sort of you know mutually experience, uh, experience and, and showcase the benefits of it as well, rather than having like less well supported software. So it's um, again the, you know this is why Ubuntu Mate being part of the Ubuntu um, community side of things really gets benefit benefits from being there is because you know the power and the the work that goes into Ubuntu then you know it trickles into um, Ubuntu Mate in the same way and it's not just the the operating system itself but it's the applications on it and it's pretty good software choices Brazero for optical media VLC media player which is interesting because that's a QT based application I believe I see it in a lot of um, applications with GTK um, desktop environments Manjaro come with it as well. Is it built against? It uh, doesn't necessarily say here. Oh, well, but VLC, a lot of people really like that as a media player. Certainly well supported. I don't think that it is on the original Ubuntu that specifically. But they do say, like, where, for example, the Ubuntu software requires significant dependencies and whatever they may divulge from the... Divulge? Diverge from the the uh, the official software selection so that is pretty good also one thing that is super 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 
good. Interesting phrasing there. The Ubuntu Mate Boutique on the website, not to be confused with the Ubuntu Mate Software Boutique, which is just a shop. Um, it shows you where you can buy laptops with Ubuntu Mate pre-installed. It shows you how you can, with some, some clothing there, um, buttons, and also you can get it on a CD or on a USB as well. So you can actually buy, physically buy, you know, you can buy physical media of Ubuntu Mate and physical laptops. Now, uh, one thing I will point out is that the prices that you see here on the Entraware laptops have changed since, so so they're not completely up to date. I think some of the higher end computers are a bit cheaper and some of the lower end ones have gone up slightly in price. Um, I think this Tritium, which says it starts at 299, yeah, so it's got, yeah, it's gone up to 329. Um, not the massive, of most massive of price hikes, but uh, a little out of date on the website there, but uh, not too bad. I mean, and they're designed to be customized. And uh, Entraware, um, I've not ever used an Entraware laptop, but I've only ever heard good things about them. They are the UK's answer to System76. And I, like, I think that's really, that is a really, you know, sort of, you know, not many distributions will have places, you know, will have links to places that sell laptops with the pre-installed on. And that's mostly because a lot of distributions don't get those kind of hardware deals. But that to me, just that, that to me massively elevates it because what that does is it, it says, if someone comes to me and says, Chris, I would like to, to get on with Linux, but you know, you're, you're not in my, you know, local area. You're not able to help me. You know, you, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to have to pick up the phone and call you every time something goes wrong. Is there a way that I can experience Linux in, in the most hassle-free way possible? And then I could just link them to this. I go, yeah, just buy, buy an Entraware laptop, you know, for, for, for just over 300 quid which is a good price for a laptop. What do you get here? So that looks like a laptop generally fast enough to, to do internet browsing and and, and office stuff, like a, a basic sort of work laptop. Uh, you could probably get a few games running on that, but it, it would it, it's, it's far from a powerhouse. But then you'd be, you'd be looking at, and some of these other ones, some of these mid-range ones, uh, what do you get? So you're getting an i5 for 700, four gig, hmm. I'd get the up. I'd get the um, the upgrade there. One terabyte SSD. That's uh, yeah. That starts going up in price, then, doesn't it? That starts going up in price. See, that's why I like desktops. You can you can you can make those purchases uh, <laughs> over a longer period of time. So the download tab. Let's go to the download tab because this is again. This is one where I feel that many distributions mess it up. And Ubuntu Mate, generally speaking, have it right. The only thing I w I will say about it though is that you go to the download and it says choose a release, and it doesn't distinguish between. It says LTS, but other than that, it doesn't seem to distinguish between. Uh, it doesn't tell you which ones which and why you want would want one over the other. It once you click on it and scroll down and start doing some of the reading. Then, then you'll see that you know it, it. It talks about the LTS and stuff like that. It also gives you a torrent, which is always good. Uh, and also, it does like the thing is, you know, th these distributions have to fund themselves. So I always, I, I personally like like it and appreciate it when they do have like a tip button somewhere, or they have they make it easy to donate, because you know, tipping tipping two dollars fifty, you know, if it's easy to do, not you know, it's it's another or tip tip five dollars, you know, if you've got two, you know, a lot of people have have two and a half dollars spare um you know in uk currency that's like what two, two quid nowadays or something or one pound fifty so it's 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 not a lot so so if you make it easy to donate just a quick paypal link or whatever it is which i think it is yep great direct download and then it also gives you links to where you can buy the disc in so you've got like you've got your options and they're explained as well look at the wording straightforward very simple wording not long just short And another thing that I think is really, really good, I can close that now, I think, is the uh, Ubuntu Mate Software Boutique. This is like, this is the, this is a cherry on top of, oops, I've just gotten rid of it there, but you can easily put it up. Um, yeah, system welcome screen. So you can get this to start. This starts when, on first install. Skip that. Uh, and you can open it every time you log in if you want. It's This is great. 
it's all in this nice little application gives you introductions all that kind of stuff it tells you where you can find help it gives you getting started information languages updates and extras customization optional tasks backups That, see, it's not intimidating. And it's it's probably better than a wiki, actually. I quite like wikis because it's like a nice standard layout. Uh, Manjaro wiki is quite good. The Arch wiki, of course, excellent. Tremendous, as someone who will not be mentioned might say. So, and then, yeah, so it gives you it gives you the community support as well. It, it opens up the, it gives you access via the hex chat. So that's good. Uh, there's the shop, which just takes you to the uh, the place that we were just talking about. But the software boutique. Now this is this is the cherry on top, because this allows you to install so everything you know, like um, it's a curation. So it's curated applications with a nice description there. You can hide the proprietary stuff, and it also includes things like InSync which isn't available in the regular Ubuntu. So there's Kaja Dropbox, so it's dro you've got a Dropbox there that actually allows, that is specific to this desktop environment. So since I usually install my software on the command line, I didn't actually notice this um, until I, it came to making this video, but uh, it, the software boutique is considered to be, it seems, the primary way to install new software. And considering how much software is actually in it and how straightforward and easy to use the software boutique is that actually makes a whole bunch of sense and actually is a step towards making it more user friendly to a lot of newcomers um, especially if intermediate and, and more advanced users can just simply drop into the command line and uh, and get work in there anyway but if you want to install um, a few other software centers you can install the um, the gnome software center the ubuntu software center synaptic package manager which would probably be what i would go with so um so it gives you plenty of options there, but it's interesting that you have to install Synaptic Package Manager or even the um, the Ubuntu Software Center, which actually I believe is this top uh, entry here now rather than that one. I think this one is no longer being used as much, if at all. So I think I'm going to leave it there. I just want to do a bit of a video just showing my appreciation for such an amazing distribution. It's great for people who are new to Linux, um, and it uses like honest language as well. It doesn't try and um, use like Windows-friendly language, which might then cause confu confusion once that person gets sort of further into Linux. So it use, it's very straightforward. It's very user-friendly. It's stable. The the small UI de uh, decisions that they make are completely, you know, they like they make a lot of sense. They're good open-source citizens. You know, they 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 send their code um, upstream. Uh, you know, uh, I think, and I think the worst thing I can seriously say about it is that choice of green as the default Ubuntu Mate green. Just it just it, it just doesn't doesn't I don't know I just don't see it as a pleasant shade of green. It's more kind of brownie and dark. But uh, like I say, it's 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 not even a big superficial um, criticism. So. I think I'm going to leave it there. I think that's about it from me today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Uh, but I don't, I don't usually recommend distributions because I appreciate that sort of everyone has their own use case and uh, experience level and all that kind of stuff. But, 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 but I, I gotta say, this is certainly like a serious recommendation. Like this is something that can be used in like a huge number of use cases, and I think that this is. Uh, a good example of how far Linux has come in somewhere like the past five years. Um, I think it's brilliant, and I love it. And good, it's good to see Linux in such a healthy place, I think. So that's about it for me today. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and you've been awesome. Take care now.